What's up, guys? I'm Trey Smith. And I'm Bailey Smith. And we are the owners of Recapture Values. And, and you, you are, are watching, watching Teach It Tuesday. Tuesday. Today, we're going to be going over a brand new pattern. It just got released this week, and we were uh, able to be a part of the testing for this. It's a beautiful pattern, um, and it's actually really comparable to a lot of the boutique brands um, for women that I've always wished there was a mini version for so that I could match my daughter and my daughter could match me. And so now with Made for Mermaid Sage, you can do that. And there's pocket options, which is super cute. We're not gonna be doing the pocket today. We're just gonna do the simple basic scoop neck, maxi dress, curved hem with a mid split. So all the links for this pattern will be down in the description. There is an option to get the women's, there's an option to get the girls, or you can bundle them together and save a little bit of money. And we'll include all those links down below. But the girls pattern goes from half, it's half size, which is comparable to about a 12 months, up to I believe a 14 goes up to a 14 in the girls version and then the women's version is like an extra extra small up to a I think 5x and for uh, made for mermaids the women sizes are colors so instead of corresponding to a number they have a color so that's pretty cool for this pattern like I said, there are multiple options for this pattern. Like there's so many options, it's, it's amazing. So they have a pocket option, so you can add the pockets into the maxi dress. They have a color blocking option, which means you can make three different um, sections of the dress different colors if you wanna do that. We're not gonna do that today. Um, and then they also have different split options, different sleeve options, different lengths. You can make this into a tunic, a dress, a midi dress, or a maxi dress all sorts of options. You can even do a v-neck if you wanted to. You can leave the sleeves off and make it sleeveless. Possibilities are endless on this dress and it comes in the women's sizes too so you can do some mommy and me action which is so super cute. All right so we're gonna do like I said the scoop neck maxi version curved hem mid split. So to do that you'll need to make sure that you're printing the correct pieces and for me this pattern is gonna have a little bit more extra lines on it because I used a one blended with a two height because my daughter, she fit all the boxes on the number one size, which is the 18 month size, but she is the 24 month or 2T, which is size two. She's size two length. And so we had to blend it. And so how to do that is you would go to your layers feature on your pattern. Um, and then there's, there's also instructions in your pattern to do this. So when you download the pattern from the links below, of course, there will be instructions on how to use your layers feature, which is definitely, definitely helpful so you don't have all these lines on your page and you know what to cut. Okay, and there's also a page in there about like if you're based on the style you want to do, what pages you need to print for that style and for that size. So you don't have to print all the pieces of the pattern and only use a certain few. It's also good for printer paper and printer ink. All right, so to blend two sizes together, what I would do, or what I did, was I, I selected the one and the two, and then I cut all the one out of here. So the one would be the pink line, and the two would be the red line. I, I did that. And then the length I cut at the two. So this would be, this swoop was supposed to be where I would cut it if it was just a straight one. And so instead, I swooped it down, connected it, and cut the maxi dress for the two. So you'll need a front piece and a back piece and a neckline because we're doing a scoop neckline. There's also a v-neck neckline uh, pattern piece. We're just doing a scoop and then a short sleeve. That's what we're going to do today. There's all sorts of sleeve options on this as well. As you can see, I have my sleeves cut right here. This is a really very beautiful, um, very nautical looking um, navy and ivory double rush poly stripe and so i just figured it'd be really cute elongating maxi dress because you know even though my daughter doesn't need to you know look taller or skinnier i may need it she doesn't but you know it's look really cute for mommy and me dress let's go ahead and get our pattern piece marked all right so this is the front piece here and we need to make sure that we put our split lines where they need to go so that we can make sure we're 
hemming it correctly later. Okay, so you're gonna match up your points, put your pattern piece on here, and then determine your cut line here. Okay, so you're gonna look, and as you can see, they have the split placement marks here. And it says the top is a high split, the middle is a mid split, and the low mark is a low split. Since I did two different sizes, I'm gonna have to determine which line is for what. So they already have a pocket placement line up here. So we're not gonna do anything with that because we're not doing pockets. Okay, so I'm gonna assume, since I added the two length, I'm gonna need to use the two line for the split. All right, so that is the low split. This is the mid split, and then this would be the high split. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the mid split. I feel like that's a really good split there. And so I'm just gonna kind of just make a little mark there. And on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. This side, just make sure all my pieces are lined up here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Make a mark over here. And I just carried that mark over to the other side of my pattern here um, so that I could flip it over and the mark's still there. All right, so that's where our split's gonna be. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently as far as the sleeve instructions go because the sleeve instructions would call for you to sew this on the flat and I'm gonna do it in the round just because that's just a personal preference. Um, but if you wanna follow the instructions of the pattern, absolutely go ahead. But if you're following along with this tutorial, it'll get you pretty much the same result. It's just, for me, it's just a little bit easier to sew. That's just my personal opinion. But I'm gonna go ahead and match up my shoulder seams here. Sew there. And while we're at it, we might as well just go ahead and sew down the side seams. But with the side seams, what you're gonna need to do, before we do that, I've already got my sleeves rolled, or yes, folded up half inch, and I'm gonna zigzag stitch across here just to top stitch those down. All right, let me flip this up here. Making sure everything is lined up. All my edges are lined up here. This is just the bottom of the maxi dress. Just getting everything ready so that it can go right over to the serger. But before we do that, the pattern has a really cute, um, I, or a really good idea, not cute, <laughs> a really good idea to make this work. So we got our lines marked here for the pattern split. Um, what it says to do, it's a half inch seam so allowance. Measure about a half inch here. And you're gonna measure it out from the mark that you made. And just make another little mark. Okay. And then you're gonna do this right here. And you're gonna sew about, I'd say a quarter inch from that. allowance there. Of course, don't just mark on your fabric. Make sure you're using a fabric marker. Make your marks like we originally did there. And then you're gonna make sure that you're measuring half inch, because that's your seam allowance. And then about a quarter inch to one inch up. And that's gonna help you do your split. And then once you get that straight stitch, we're gonna sew a straight stitch on that line that we just drew. Cut the little ends off here of my string so they don't get stuck in a seam anywhere. So make sure you secure those because those are gonna be the starting point of your seam here. Pattern actually calls for a inch straight stitch right here. I did about a quarter inch. It doesn't really matter as long as you do that there. It's gonna make your uh, split really crisp there. So what you're gonna do, so that we've already marked the end of our split. So above this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut into, not to the line, but almost to the straight stitch that you just sewed. All right, and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that this is out of the way and you're gonna serge all the way down your side seams, making sure that this bottom piece is out of the way because you're gonna hem that to make your split later. So when you do your serge, which I'll bring you over in a second to do, that's what you're going to do. All right, so your neck band piece, we'll go ahead and get that started. Of course, if you watch any of the uh, recapture value videos, what we like to do is neck band, that's how you folded it. 
that's how I cut it on the fold because that's what the pattern tail says to do. And so of course my stretch is going up around the neck bend and this is vertical stripes. So I fold it this way and then I fold it again this way right here. And then I'm gonna put a pin in it. Like so. And then I'm gonna hem these sleeves real fast, just with a zigzag stitch right here. Folded them up about a half inch. All right, so I've already zigzag stitched my sleeves. That's some weird thread going on there. Let me go ahead and clip that. Zigzag stitched my sleeves. All right, and so what I'm gonna do, and like I said, I do this differently than the pattern. It's just personal preference. But you, if you don't want to do it like this, you can absolutely do it like the instructions call you to, or say to do it. They're very good instructions. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath my serger, underneath my serger like this. And I'm going to make sure that the needle goes in to the fabric and is in the up position. I'm going to pull my serger strings right here like this. Pull them underneath my foot here and then cut them off. That way, my sleeve in here is secure. There will be no unraveling, and that's good to go. I don't have to clip this pattern because these sleeves have this uh, cool pointed area, so that will be your point. You don't have to clip a point for those sleeves. All right, so we're going to do the next sleeve here. Same thing. Put it underneath my foot, make sure my needle or my blade is up. And when it goes into the fabric, lift your foot, pull your strings tight, pull it underneath. All right, and again, that's just to make sure that it stays um, and doesn't get unraveled. So we're gonna go ahead and do our neck bands. This tiny seam here, oh, this is the folded seam, or the folded edge, so this is the all the raw edges together. And so for the neck band, we are gonna have to quarter it. And so what I like to do is I just keep it folded and snip these two points for one point. We're gonna use the seam for one point here. And then flip it out. Make sure all your raw edges are lined up and then match that point that you just clipped with the seam. And then you have your two side points that you're going to snip and snip. Make sure you can see it on both sides here. All right, so that's your neck band. And so now we can move on. So we've got the sleeves and the neck band and do our shoulder seams. So again, right sides together, put your shoulder seams together and get to sewing. Half inch seam allowance. I'm just clipping my tails. All right, so then we're gonna do the side seams and we're just gonna go ahead and get started. And remember that we're gonna fold this kind of out of the way. We're gonna kind of fold this out of the way and pay attention to your needle because you're gonna want your needle to stop about right there. That straight stitch that you did and then you cut so that was the the end of your split that's how long you needed your split to be this tiny dot right there and then you cut a, a slit to the seam allowance not into the seam allowance but to right up against the seam allowance not not cutting the thread and so when you do that when you open this up after it's done these will make a perfectly good little seam here all right so you're gonna make your serger stitch end right above where you did your straight stitch and where you cut into your seam allowance. So pay attention to your needle 
as to not, and your blade. You might want to turn your blade off if you don't have steady hands at this part. All right, so we're going to pull it away and cut it there. And so what you get there, which I kind of went a little too far in, so I'm just going to snip it just a little bit. All right, there we go. That's perfect. That's the best part about these kind of things is it's not super the end of the world if you don't get it just right. Okay, so that's what you're left with. So it's almost like you cut an L shape into, that's the bottom of the dress here. It's almost like you cut an L shape. And then this is your straight stitch that you sewed. And that's the actual placement mark that we put the split on. And so the reason you do that is so when you go back, you can open this up and then you can hem it correctly when you need to hem the split. It opens up perfectly and there won't be any wrinkles on the outside. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. This side should be a little bit easier since we just did that. out of the way. Make sure we're paying attention to the, the blade and the needle. Alright, I believe that was pretty perfect. And again, I just I'm going to tighten my strings there because it's not going to be super important there because it's not going to be a wear and tear area. And so again, this is the other side. This one was a little bit more better, or a little bit more better. This smell better. Okay, but yeah, this was a little bit better trial there. And so again, what that does is that side, or that straight stitch that you sewed right there, it will allow for you to open this up and make it go really easy for your split. Very, like, perfect. You're not even gonna really notice the split here. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and add the sleeves just because I feel like it's a good time to add the sleeves. Again, I am doing things a little bit out of order than the instructions call for. So if you ever get confused, look at your pattern instructions or re or rewatch this video, replay this video, um, whatever works best for you. I just like to do tutorials based on what works for me. So seems to have helped a lot of people, but always remember that this is my opinion. This is my preference. And so you, some people may do it differently. And once you actually learn how to do these things, you may do it differently. It's just like math. You do a math problem. There's multiple ways to get to the same result. So, you know, you may find a way that works better for you. All right, so for the sleeves, the garment is inside out still. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our pins. And the sleeves are right side out. And so for any, like any other garment, I'm going to put the sleeves in just like I do every other video with something that has sleeves. I'm going to, this is the arm hole. This is the neck hole right here. So I'm going to put my hand through the hole and I'm going to pull the right, the sleeve inside the hole. And again, so we didn't have to make points because we have this little triangle piece here and that is going to be the point that we match up there. And then the seam here, we're going to match up both of our seams, the sleeve seam and the side seam. All right, so then we have our sleeve on like this. Just make sure that your right side's together. Um, and then we're just going to sew around in a circle. And of course, as always, I didn't say this in the beginning, but if you see me using a serger, you can absolutely just do this on the sewing machine. You can do a sewing machine, zigzag stitch, or any other stretch stitch that works for you. It's just a lot quicker to do it on a serger. And the inside of the garments just look a lot better when you do on a serger too. So. You will cut the triangle off, of course. All the while you're going around the circle, just make sure your raw edges are lining up and make sure you're removing your pins. And then you'll just go back over where you started. And you can 
choose to turn your knife off there, just if you don't have a steady hand. I've just done this for so long that I don't really turn my knife off for that. Um, and then I'm going to use this handy dandy knit picker. And all you do is you stick it in the fabric like so. Pull it out and then pull it through. And so it just tucks your serger tail into that seam there so that you don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. And then that sleeve is on. And this is the sleeve on inside out, of course, but it's on. All right, so we're gonna put the other one on. For the other side, exact same thing, just the opposite side. Garment's still inside out. You're gonna go through the neck hole with your hand out the sleeve, the armhole. Put the sleeve with the this part into the the armhole. <laughs> My goodness. All right, and then you're gonna match up that triangle point again. And then you're gonna match up your seams, your sleeve seam to your the top of your sh uh, side seam on the garment. All right. And then again, you're just gonna sew in a circle making sure that your raw edges are staying together because you will get um you will have your fabric shift and not get caught in the seam and then you'll have a hole in your seam and it won't work so just make sure that all your raw edges are lining up you shouldn't have to stretch this too much you just have to manipulate the fabric a little bit to um, go in the curves my um tail going back this way over where I started it's just what I like to do um it's easier for me I think I've tried doing it the other way I just like this way a little bit better you come out about right there and pull it through and cut your little excess off and so then that's secured there and you can flip your garment right side out to apply the neck band all right so then there's your sleeves on there and then we're going to do the neck band okay so i've already quartered my top and my bottom for my neck hole here so or my top top and bottom top and back so you're going to match those points up because the scoop is different for the front than the back your shoulder seams will not be your second point you'll need to make your second points here which will be about an inch almost an inch and a quarter to the front of the neckline so you can do that by matching up your front and your back points which are directly in the middle i've already made those and then you will find your equal four points and like again, again, like I said, the reason you do that and your side seams would not be your equal points because your scoop is lower in the front. So your points are going to be there and there. All right. I like to put my next neckband seam in the back just to denote the back, even though this one obviously has a back and a front. Sometimes they don't. Apply all the raw edges together. around the neck band matching up my points with each point here this is called quartering and i do it in every video that requires a cuff or a neck band and you can add multiple points until you get better at it you can do more than four if you want to I just found four to be the best for me. But if you're a beginner, you can absolutely do like six points. You could do eight points, whatever you need to make your neck bands look the best. All right, so I'm gonna start right here on this seam or on this point in here, the front. I like to start right where my needle is and then take my needle out and then start the seam a little bit 
make sure that the needle has gone through the fabric and that it's been caught so that when I pull on this, it's not going to pull it out from the serger. All right. And again, this is a quarter, sorry, half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to make sure the neck band is going to be naturally a tiny bit smaller than the opening. So I have to stretch the neck band to match the opening. Don't stretch the opening, stretch the neck band to match the opening so that it lays flat and all your raw edges are together and then you make sure you got your two raw edges of your neck band and your one raw edge of your garment put together. You're doing a half inch seam allowance. Okay. Do your next point here and you just make sure your fabric again for each point that you go to just make sure everything's lining up all your pieces are lined together like this. Next point. All right, and last point here. Just making sure everything's still lined up. And back over where I started. And I'm just gonna tuck my tail into my seam here. And you can find this little tool, um, both of these tools really, on Amazon. And then you flip your neckband out. And you have a perfectly sewn neckband. And then you can choose to top stitch that down. I'm not going to do that right now. But you can do that to make it lay flatter. Um, and that's just cosmetic. You don't really have to do that. All right, so everything else will be done on the sewing machine, but I'm going to go ahead and serge the edge here just because I like the way it looks. I'm going to serge the bottom edge um, just because I feel like it gives me a better hem. And so I'm just going to make my knobs go from two. Let's see here. I'm going to do two, two, four, and four just to see. I'm not really cutting off anything. I'm not cutting off anything. I'm just getting a nice surged edge for the bottom here to make hemming just a smidge easier. I'm going to do that with both sides. can be done at the sewing machine so let's go back over there right, so now we're just going to hem up the bottom here and what I'm going to go ahead and do is hem the bottom up it's a half an inch and I'm just going to use a straight stitch a elongated straight stitch here so my straight stitch is going to be 3.5 width by 3.5 length. And I am just going to curve it around as I go. And the instructions actually give you a really easy way to hem it. I just find this works just fine for me. But if it doesn't work for you, definitely follow the instructions of the pattern, which um, you can use hem tape and stuff like that to get this better hem for the bottom. I just fold it up and curve it around as I go. Trying to maintain that half inch. We've done one side and then of course you would just press this to make it look a little better because it kind of wrinkles a little bit because I chose a straight stitch mainly because this is not going to matter stretching or not because it's not going to be 
um, affect the actual fit of the garment. So that's why I chose a straight stitch there. You can absolutely use a zigzag stitch, but I just chose a straight stitch there because it doesn't have to stretch necessarily. All right, so we're going to do this again on the other side. Back stitch, just go around the curve. Again, I just like to make sure that my stuff is folding correctly. Just don't be afraid of your fabric. Um, don't be afraid to manipulate it to do what you need to do. So there's the back one, and let me grab these little clippers real fast. Alright, just to clip those little points so that they're not sewn up in my seam here in a second. And I'm going to use a straight stitch again for this next part because we just have one more part here and we're done with this. And so it's super simple for super cute, especially doing it this way. And when you add pockets, it's a little bit extra steps. Or if you do the color, color block, it's going to be a few extra steps. Not really so much, but just a few extra steps. And if you do the v-neck, of course, it's going to be extra steps. But I feel like this is the simplest way to do this. Um, and, of course, you can leave the sleeve off as well. Um, so my marker is showing through a little bit there. It's washable, so once you wash it, it'll go away. Just to show you guys what I did. My marker's kind of showing through, but oh well. All right, so I'm going to flip this back wrong side out. Inside out here. Okay. And so when you get your, hopefully you guys can see this. When you get your split here, you're going to open it up where you cut it here. And then you're going to fold it down like this. And you're going to fold it down like this, half inch again. And you're just going to sew here, block over in here. And so that's going to be your split. And so again, you're going to do the same exact thing we just did at the bottom, but you're just going to do it here. And you're going to pivot here and then over. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to start on this side. We're going to start right here. And you're going to kind of have to hold your fabric a little weird here to make this part here work. And make sure that none of your fabric's underneath here and not getting caught in the seam. So I'm going to back stitch, start and seam, and back stitch. Go down. Alright, so this is when it's going to get kind of weird because you're wanting to do, you're wanting to go up right here. And so to do that and to make it look as crispy as possible, you're going to want to kind of maneuver your fabric around so that the split is right there. All right, so then you're gonna pivot. So that just means you lift your needle up, pivot, and you're gonna go this way for a minute. Make sure you put your needle back down where you ended. All right, and so just make sure that this seam is going the way you want it to go. Okay. I'm going to go over. You're just going straight across here. If you want to do it manually for a second, that'll help it not go so much into your... Okay, so then you just do a straight line across, and now you're going to be going down the other side here. So you're going to fold this one up here. Alright, and so make sure you put your needle back down where you finished there, and just sew a straight stitch down, and let's see what this looks like, and again, like I said, because this marker showed right here, and you, like I said, you will be able to see my marker here until I wash this fabric, it's just no problem. As long as you know it's washable. <laughs> Alright. I 
to do the other side now. Make sure that this part is cut here. All right. So as you can see, there is the side point there. And here is the split on this side. And this is what it ends up looking like on the outside of the garment. That's what your split ends up looking like when you are done. It is a perfect split minus my marker marks there. Perfect split. Put your fabric. Again, we're starting right here on the end. And I'm going to go ahead and get my fabric set up for success here. <laughs> this is probably the most tedious part of this pattern, to be honest. Um, so once you get this down, this, this is a breeze. This pattern is a breeze. And like I said, as long as you're not doing all the options. So backstitch. Just doing a straight stitch here. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to make sure I get this side already set up. This split look nice. All right, and then I lift my foot and I'm gonna pivot it over. And this is the part that gave me a little bit of trouble last time, so I'm just gonna try to be a little bit slower as to not push my fabric into the needle plate. Make sure that you are starting where you left off. I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little manually. And then I think that'll give me a good start to kind of push it slowly. All right, perfect. Okay, and then you're gonna pivot again, final pivot to the end of this. Make sure you put it down where you ended, and then you're on your final stretch. All right, back stitch at the end there, and then snip your tail. So your end pieces here, not your tails, whatever you want to call them. You can call them whatever you want to call them. All right, and so then you get another perfect split here. Again, with my magic marker, or no, it's not magic marker, it's fabric marker, but still. Perfect split here. All right, so let's go see what this looks like all finished. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and top stitch the neck. Go ahead, just to top stitch it, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Top stitch it. 3.5 width, or straight stitch is what I'm going to use. Top stitch does it just tops it stitches that seam down the serger seam down and then that is what top stitching does there it just top stitches the seam down the neckband seam so now it's stuck down there and it won't flip up anymore all right so after a good press and then I just hit these um, magic marker or not magic marker whatever kind of fabric marker they are um, I just hit it with a little bit of water and so that went away as you can see it needs to dry but the magic marker went away and then I'm left with a split there's a piece on there and then I'm left with the perfect split here perfect split perfect split we did the scoop neck maxi lengths with a curved hem, because there is a straight hem that you can do, and we did the midi, the mid, sorry, not midi, we did the mid split here, because there's one that's higher and there's one that's lower. We did the mid split here, because I feel like it's the cutest as far as appropriate, but still there. Um, and we didn't do pockets, and we did short sleeves. So that's the dress that we did. And we would like to shout out Nicole Hatfield with Crazy Crafty XOXO is her business name. And she's one of our platinum members and she's doing the thing and we just wanted to give her a shout out and say you go girl go check her out um but that's this this dress super simple 
and there's a women's pattern so you can make this one with, for your girls and just use the exact same thing for the women's one of course it'd be a lot more pages because it's a little bigger pattern you're gonna need a lot more fabric um i didn't add that at the beginning but the fabric choices this is double brush poly it's super cute i like the more flowy fabrics too like rayon spandex tri blend bamboo modal all those types of spandex are super flowy viscose even that's that's the one that a lot of the big name companies like old navy and stuff like that use they have the really soft fabric viscose uh spandex is the one that everybody's so for viscose jersey millie may uh fabrics is about to drop some viscose spandex that would be perfect 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 for this so we'll link them down below check them out um we'll be featuring a little bit more of their stuff here later soon um I didn't get any in time for this, but they are great. And usually when my, I get stuff from them, it goes off the shelf really fast. Um, just like Knit Pop. But this is from Sincerely Riley, this navy and ivory stripes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Super simple maxi dress. Uh, make sure that you're liking and subscribing. And again, just um, reiterating the shout out to Nicole Hatfield, Crazy Crafty XOXO on Etsy. Check her out. She's doing the thing. Like I said, she's one of our platinum members. Doing great. Doing great things. Check her out. Show her some love. Um, she's doing some bummies and some bows on there. So, you know, show her some love. Go ahead. Give her some favorites. Do that. We'll see you guys next Tuesday.